Turning dreams into reality in the night with the All right, we are live on Facebook. What's up, y'all? How you guys doing? Uh, hope you're having an absolutely amazing, amazing uh, evening, day, afternoon, whenever you're listening to this, either live or on replay. Uh, great to have y'all back here. For those of you that are new to pre-PT Grind, uh, my name is Joseph Gugi. I'm a physical therapist. I'm also a PT school acceptance coach. And what we do, well, what we do at Pre-PT Grind is we help you get into physical therapy school without wasting time, without wasting money, so that you can get into the profession of your dreams. So that's what you're looking forward to, uh, then you are in the right place. And, and what, what you're tuning in for right now has become my favorite series that we do. Uh, we call it the Pre-PT Inspire Series because it's meant to do just that for you, inspire the mess out of you. And how we do it is we actually bring the students who were once pre-PTs and have recently gotten accepted into PT school because the reason why you're on this page is because you want to be a physical therapist. So we might as well bring you people that are getting to your destined goal of getting into PT school and have them share their stories. And what makes this cool is that a lot of times when we hear stories of other pre-PTs or uh, PT students, we get all the good stuff. We get the, yeah, you know, I persevered. I it was good, you know, keep fighting. Like we get a lot of the, the superficial fluff, uh, you know, quotable stuff. But, but what makes this super, super unique is that we get to the heart of what the real struggles were. And, and the goal is that by the end of each interview, you'll be able to say, okay, all right, I recognize those struggles in myself. And if Sergio can do it, and if all these other students that have come onto this interview can do it, then so can I. That's what it's meant to do for you. So if you can get that by the end of this interview, then uh, we have done our job and we have inspired the heck out of you so that one day uh, you can join us on the other side as uh, PT students and as physical therapists. So so tonight we have none other than Sergio. This is episode 51. Sergio, how you feeling, brother? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling excited. I'm Ooh. feeling... I mean, a wondrous number of different things, you know, just to be on here and be one of these, uh, these people that are, you know, part of the 12 K, you know, it feels, it feels good, man. Like, you know, like I wear that shirt with pride now, you know, I walk around and I'm like, yeah, I got, I got in, I got in, you know? Yes, sir, man. So uh, this is going to be super chill and, and, and now I'm super, super excited, but um, you mentioned the, the 12 K and for those of y'all that have never heard that term before uh, 12 K is roughly the number of students that get accepted into PT school every single year. So uh, students that are part of the accepted system, which is our coaching program, we call them the, the 12 K nation. Basically uh, once you're accepted into PT school, you're part of that 12,000 students that gets accepted. So now Sergio is a part of that. Uh, but but let's go to the beginning. Like prior to you actually getting accepted, let's go back to where it all started. Why did you choose physical therapy? Like what drew you to PT in the first place? Uh, let's start there so we can get an understanding of where you're coming from. And then let's get to the heart of this interview. Yeah, the most definitely. Um, it all started actually um, in high school. Like I dislocated my shoulder playing baseball you know, and uh, I was 15, you know, dislocated my shoulder. And, uh, you know, that's pretty tough to kind of do, especially when the, uh, not the coach, but the doctor tells you, like, you should stop playing baseball. And you're like, what? Like, I'm not going to stop playing this sport. This is, I love this sport. You know, this is what I do. And then it just kept happening. It just kept happening. It just kept happening. And, you know, being a 15, 16, 17, a teenage young kid, like, I neglected the hell out of it. Like, you know, I kept playing, I kept playing, I kept, you know, you know, on top of that, I, I, I was doing I was boxing as well. And I would box just like that every little while, like I would dislocate my shoulder and I'd be just go to one of my homies and be like, Hey man, just pop this sucker back in. And he would pop it back in. Yeah. It was just, it just, it just, that's how, that's how it came. You know, I was just, uh, but then, you know, I kind of got, got involved with the wrong crowd, you know, went to uh would go to some crazy parties you know just just do 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 some do some things you know and um that I'm not really proud of but at the same time like that drove me those that experience drove me to make the one of the biggest decisions of my lives and that's to join the United States Army uh and I was older when I joined and I wasn't 18 19 20 I was 
24, when I enlisted in 25, when I was on my way to uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky to do my basic training, I enlisted as a, as a medic, as a combat medic. And uh, right away, uh, after I finished with medic school, um, I, I went to uh, Schofield Barracks, Hawaii on Oahu. And we're like, oh, man, that's cool. You're in, in Hawaii. I mean, of course, you know, you say that at first and then you find out like, hey, we're going to deploy to Iraq in two months. I'm like, man, I just got here. Like, let me let me enjoy the the, the Hawaiian life a little bit. Right. Just a little bit. Uh, and then there we were. We were it was in Iraq and, you know, dealing with everything that's that's going down, you know, with us being involved over there. And uh, it, it was just a whole game changer for me you know I just knew like man I don't want to do this anymore like I I was thinking about like staying in but the politics were so much that they drove me not to want to continue with the military I mean the military is for a lot of people but after I think I, my term was good enough right and so while I was uh in Iraq I actually ruptured uh my Achilles sentence and uh I had ruptured it before that, like a different, the other one, uh, way before, before that playing, playing uh, break dancing and playing ball and stuff like that. But that one was significant because it was just, it came off of an explosion, you know, uh, I didn't get any, any shrapnel or anything on my, on my leg, but it, it came off of like just a fear, the sheer force of the explosion kind of ruptured it, you know, and me being doc, you know, I was doc, I couldn't be hurt. So I had to kind of, just suck it up and pretend nothing happened because we don't we don't get hurt you know we're supposed to help everybody and so while i was going through through that stuff like i mean it recovered and you know we did its thing um i started kind of thinking about it like man i'd like to be a physical therapist okay that what happened back when i was in high school it came back it just kind of did a full loop you know i forgot about it and then it came back and i was like man, I want to be a PT, you know, I, I just, there was just something about helping people and, uh, but not having to see all that trauma, you know, um, and, and that excited me about it. So I'm like, all right, so, you know, went through, I wasn't, I didn't re-enlist, came home, went to a Los Angeles Harbor College and grinded, 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 PT, 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 man, I didn't know much about PT other than me getting treated by one before, but that's what I wanted to do. Just PT. Like I had, I had nothing else. That's all I, that's all I desired was PT. And then, then I started dealing with some other struggles, you know, things that happened post-war, you know, you know, uh, PTSD, you know, I, uh, those things started coming out and, you know, they still exist now for me, you know, like that's something I had to live with the rest of my life. But like that was a challenge itself, um, you know, taking these classes and sometimes, you know, you're in the middle of class and you're sitting in there and you're just like, dude, like they just said this word and I'm back, you know, back where, where I was, you know, back in combat or back in, not, not, not all flashbacks are bad memories. Some of them actually really good ones, you know, some of them it would be like, like, Hey, remember this? And, Boom, I'd, I'd go back and I'd be like, remember my buddies, you know, some of them, some who aren't here anymore, right? And so all of, all of this kind of continued me to want to be that doc, you know, to help people, help people, help people. And it was just as rewarding as, you know, being a medic, except without the trauma, you know, there's something, it's really special, you know. And when I started working into, in the field, like at least in a, as a, as an aide or as a tech, right? Um, you could think, uh, Nate novice for getting me into there. That's my boy, you know. Uh, but there's a lot of things that I just noticed that like how physical therapy was had a lot of uh mental issues as well. Like these, some of these people would get uh seriously hurt, and you know, they had their own post-traumatic stress disorder, you know. And I started I started realizing that, and I'm like, dude, we we just don't help their body, we help their mind. So it was just like it was a whole complete kind of thing. And I was just I knew that this was my my purpose, you know, because there's going to always going to be people that are, that are going to have those insane experiences that are going to 
you know, affect them more than just the injury itself. You know, it affects their, their minds, you know, it affects their souls. You, you really see, see it. And I think that's what a lot of like professional athletes go through too. You know, they go from being a elite, elite monster, you know, to now you're just one of the Joes now. And, you know, going from that to just becoming one of those, like a Joe is, is hard to do. It's it kind of plays a role up here, you know, um, which is a, that's kind of a lot of the same things that happened to me, you know, coming back, you know, you're, you're out there, you're this fighting, killing machine. And then you come back here and it's like, man, I can't do none of that stuff. It really, it really plays, it really affects you. So, you know, I needed something that was going to be a balance in there, something that was going to help me physically, but also help me mentally. And I, I really believe physical therapy, that's where it's at. Yeah, man. Wow, 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 wow. I... You know, you know, I've never heard that full, that full stretch of what really led you to PT. You, like, 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 like I've heard parts of it from your story, but this is the first time that I was like really digesting it. Um, and, and man, that's, it's one hell of a journey, brother. Uh, it really is. You know what I mean? And, um, and, and by the time you chose PT, you know, after all of that, you know, it seems like there was a, a like you were you were pretty certain <laughs> that, that that this was how you wanted to, to serve. Now, after being in the military, obviously, and you know, you said you ruptured your Achilles. You know, obviously, we talked about high school a little bit. You know, popping the shoulder back in and everything else. But after going through all of those things, man, PTSD uh, and just the like understanding the mental component of everything in regards to treating people and caring for people and uh, choosing that, like being certain and sure that this was the avenue that you wanted to really walk into and, and, you know, and, and take care of people through, man. Um, you know, once you figured that out and now you were on your journey as a pre-PT, now you were like, okay, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to be an average Joe. I'm, I'm getting back to classes and, you know, start my real journey to really target this profession. And it's, and, and, and step into the this calling that I now have. Like, what were your, what were your biggest hurdles now at that stage? So, what were your biggest obstacles now as a pre PT, um, now being like on it and saying, okay, like this is what I want to do. What were your biggest hurdles? And I think this question uh, might be the most important one out of this entire interview, mainly because for the people watching and for those y'all watching, uh, y'all enjoying this so far. Let me know in the comments, right? Uh, be, be, because for the people watching, these are pre PTs that. Uh, some of them have already applied and are waiting to hear back from schools. Others are yet to apply. Uh, and I want them to hear what you are going through because I think a lot of times when we're struggling, we feel like we're the only ones. Like, yeah. Like it's, 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 it's only, it's gotta be me. It's gotta be me struggling with anxiety. It's gotta be me second guessing myself. It's gotta be me dealing with, you know, pressure from other people. It's gotta be just me. Like no, like no one else really goes through that, right? And so hearing it from you will confirm that some of the things that they're struggling with right now are real and they're normal, right? We just have to be able to, you know, figure out how to deal with them and ultimately get to our goals. So for you, what were your biggest obstacles and struggles along the actual pre-PT path? Man, there was a, there was a lot actually. Um... Uh, one of those is honestly is my age, you know, um, I know to some of y'all, I might be like in my twenties, but I'm actually, I just turned 37. And so like, you know, when most of your peers are in their twenties, like mid twenties, you know, late twenties, um, and you're 10 years older than everybody else, you know, like you, you start, you know, you start feeling you, you're, you're not old, you're not the oldest one all the time, but you start noticing kind of, well, the way I'm carrying myself is different because like, I, I have this sense of urgency. Okay. Because I, I started feeling like I was getting too old. Like I was getting too old. Like I felt that I was getting too old and past my prime you know and uh these familial um kind of pressures that we have and not not to say that my my, my personal family didn't like put any pressure maybe i have my mom my dad um you know sisters or, or brothers or anything like that but like you know your aunts and uncles you know i mean aunties and uncles are the worst because they're the they're the ones that, that, that they're the ones that tell you like hey are you married uh you got kids? Nah. 
how old are you? I'm 35. Like, oh, you're past your primary. You might as well, you know. And so, like, there's a lot of that, especially, you know, if you come from, I want to say that's, that's big with minorities, you know, um, especially Hispanic culture. Uh, if you're not married by the time you're 25, like, that's it, you're over the hill, you know, like, and uh, that at first, you know, it didn't affect me at first, but then after a while, you just, once you start seeing your, your cousins start having kids, getting married, and you're just like, bro, man, I'm just going to school, I'm single, and still trying to figure my, my stuff out, you know, it gets to you, so you start thinking, like, man, like, when is it time? Like, when is it, when is it time to hang the boots, you know? And that was one of the things that actually, not until this, actually, uh, me getting accepted, that's what I was going through, you know? I mean, I can, I can always say that it was, uh, COVID was part, because, I mean, it was stress, it was such a stressful time, you know? I came to you, Joseph, right at the beginning of the COVID, okay? And, you know, we got through, you know, but there was, regardless of everything, all the work that we put in, like, I just hate the waiting part, not knowing whether you're, you're going to get in or if you're good enough to get in. And that's that, you know, you know, you're good enough. Like, man, let me get in. Trust me. I'm like, I'm in already. I already know I'm a DPT. Why? Because I know my worth that. But somebody else saying you're good enough. That's the hard part. And that, that was difficult for me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard when people, when, when you get uh, rejected because they're just saying you're not good enough. Um, even though it doesn't mean you're not good enough forever, just right now, you're not good enough. Right. Um, and this was the second time I applied, you know, the first time, like I tried to do everything alone and, uh, you know, the GRE defeated, defeated me. The GRE is, man, that, that thing sucks, dude. Honestly, it sucks. Like it's it's such a terrible thing. Like, well, but you know, I took it three, I think like three or four times. And and regardless, as much as I wanted to, and 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 I I really believe it was, you know, could be the structure of the exam or some of it could be the just, you know, what I what I would what I go through, that you know, that's why I kind of scored low. Um, and even sometimes like I would score really good on one thing, and then like the next day, the next time I take the exam, yeah, I flip flop. So it was just you know, it's the whole pressure of the whole exam. It's just, it's tough. Man. A lot of people can't, can't really handle that, but that shouldn't be the reason why we don't get into school, you know? And so, but I, I allowed that to defeat me the first time that defeated me. And, you know, I had, a, I had friends that got in and like, but they, they finished, they finished their, their, their application. I let the, the GRE defeat me and I didn't finish my applications, you know? I finished maybe one or two. And then of course I got what I got because it was last minute. And so, you know, it, it was, it was tough. It, it's, it's been going through that and just seeing people uh, get to that next level and you're being left behind, you know? So like everything when it comes to age, when it comes down to, um, you know, not knowing whether you're good enough, you know, um, not knowing like really what to do. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy how, like, you think you got everything covered. You're like, man, I'm on top of it. And then you start fighting now and you're just like, yo, man, I had no idea that I had to take like 18 more classes, you know, <laughs> like, like, or I had no idea that this, this matters. And, you know, they tell you this weighs more and, or, or this weighs more, or it's all about, you know, your GPA. It's all about this. And, and you go through what you what you believe what the professors tell you, you know. Like, I, man, I had a I had a professor tell me that I was never going to get into PT school. You know, he told me that. You know, I'm gonna name drop him too, Doctor Cheatham. Okay, because like, it's not fair. Like, it's not fair. Yeah, I have to. I have to because you know what, Joseph, I'm not the first one he said it to, but I am the one who told him right in front of his face told him like hey your opinion to me is not my reality like he goes yeah but you'll never get into pt school i don't care what school you get into you can go long beach state he named all those uh, uh all, all the pt schools around my area you know he goes you'll never get into usc what's up bro <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> 
Yeah, man. It was, it was, it was, uh, he, he continued to like, like say that to, to students. And that, I mean, that's, you know, that's our, what we call and say in the military, that's our leadership. Those are people that we look up, up to, to like, Hey, you're supposed to guide me, not like chop me down, bro. Like, and so when he started telling me all this stuff, like, I just told him, Hey, like, I just came to ask you about like, uh, I think it was a PES certification and the CES certification and going, you went on a tangent with my, with my GPA and all that stuff. I'm not even here for that, bro. Like, you know, then from there, I went to report him like to, uh, to the, what do they call it? Oh, the director, the kinesiology director, the main guy there. Right. And I told him what happened and he was just kind of, well, he's telling the truth. And I'm like, yeah, man, but you don't say that. Cause I'm thinking I have a good GPA. I'm like, I had a 3.4 at that time. You know, I'm thinking like, I, I have a pretty good GPA, but I knew my buddy who was standing next to me had like a 2.9, you know? And then there was like eight other students around, like they're listening to this. Not you, what you just did. You just crushed their spirits. If I'm telling you I have a good GPA and they don't, you just messed up their whole reality, you know? And then I'm the one to say like, you know what? Like, nah, man, you ain't telling me that. And I remember like, uh, when I came home that day, I talked to my pops about that. And I told him, you know, what he said. And he asked me what I told him. I told him that. I go, man, I just called about it for everybody. Like, man, you ain't going to tell me what I am capable and can't, capable of not doing. Like, man, I went to Iraq and had to do that stuff over there. You know, some of those stuff that I'm like, not really proud of. But at the same time that I'm very proud of as well. Right. You know, I had to do, go through all that to come here and for you to tell me what I can and can't, cannot do. Nah, bro. That's not up to you. That's up to me. That's that's such a wow. You just for those of y'all listening, did did anything Sergio just said in the last 10 minutes resonate with you? Because I got a few things I was writing down. Like as you were talking, I started like taking notes. I was like, yo, I got I gotta address a few things. But but can y'all say me or yup or you know put some hands up in the comments if anything that Sergio just said related to you, whether it was um professors or faculty members that have told y'all that your gpa is too low or you're never going to get into physical therapy school you're never going to get into like just find something else figure something else out it's too late for you and you're right man like when they say that to you in public they saying it to your peers as well because like that's not everyone is as mentally strong as you are right so Mm -hmm. for someone else that wasn't able to kind of stay in that state of mind like that could have been a massive crush to their ability to even feel like they have the capability to become, you know, a PT or whatever, right? You, you talked about, um, you know, feeling too old, right? So you say you're 37 right now. So for those of y'all that are non-traditional students, I hope y'all were listening. Uh, you said um, feel not good enough. Uh, you know, the, the, the first time you had applied, you felt alone, right? You were like, yo, like, I don't, I don't really know what's going on, like what I'm doing, like not sure. And, and I, I think you were touching on so many things that a lot of us feel, but many of us assume those are just things that we have to just put up with. Mm-hmm. That's why I just listed those off, right? The reason why these interviews even exist, y'all, is I want y'all to hear that the, the stuff y'all are, like, like your professor telling you that you're not capable, you're like you feeling alone and isolated throughout the application process. Those things are, they're common, but they should not be like, like they're not like a rite of passage, not like you shouldn't have to experience that. And that stuff actually messes y'all up. So I want y'all to just realize that those are things that if you guys see those, like, like start figuring out how can I change this? Like, how can I like divert from this? Figure out who I like, like change who I'm listening to, right? Find people to apply with, right? Like make sure that I'm not isolated, making sure that I'm changing how I think about my age, right? If I feel like I'm too old, right? Like realizing that there's other students out there that are in their forties that are trying to get, you know, into physical therapy school. And if this is your dream, then like who the heck is anyone to stop that from, you know, being, being, being your thing, being the avenue that you used to serve people with. So Sergio, as you were talking about that, I had to say that, man, before we go to the next question, I had to say that because as you were talking, I was like, yo, like, I don't think people understand that you're giving them so many like gems right now, because what you're saying is you're like, yo, these were the things that were my pain points, but these do not have to be your reality. These do not have to be the things that hold you back. GRE as well, right? Like you said, every single one of them. So uh, for those of y'all listening, I hope that that alone should have been everything y'all needed to hear tonight. Like y'all should be able to like leave this live stream right now and go 
take a nice nap or whatever, but we still got more. We still got more. So uh, for you, Sergio, man, you applied one time. Um, you mentioned a little bit about how you and I were uh, talking a little bit at the beginning of COVID last year. Uh, what led you to search for uh, for some non-traditional guidance? Because obviously your teachers were letting you down. So what led you to say, hey, I need to find some help from people that have done this before. Uh, and then tell us a little bit about, well, you ended up joining the accepted system, right? Which is our mm -hmm. coaching program. So, so, so tell us what led you to search for a program like that and then specifically how it helped you. So, um, man, I, I had a, my buddy, I mean, Nathan Navas, the podcast doc. Oh man. Uh, that, 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 that man right there. Uh, so I met him, uh, what I was still going, we were still going to, uh, California State University, Dominguez, Dominguez Hills. And, uh, you know, he was uh, the kinesiology president and I was a veterans uh, vice president. And so, you know, hey, man, you over here, you I'm over here. Let's kind of let's work things out together, you know? And so we ended up like volunteering at different places as a like uh, our two clubs merged up. And I told him, hey, if you want, you join the veterans club. You don't have to be a veteran, but you're an ally. So that way you can help us kind of spread the word, you know? And uh, so we built that friendship, right? And uh, he had been telling me about all oh, pre-PT grind and uh, the pre-PT, all that stuff, right? And so, you know, like people can tell you that stuff, but when you're not really ready for it, like you're not really gonna pay attention for it, you know? So like at, at that time, I wasn't ready for it. And uh, I got into work at, the, at a clinic uh, uh, and uh, that he was a, like the supervisor at one yeah. of the supervisors at supervisor, yeah. yeah and so we were you know he kept he kept i kept seeing him like wear the shirt the acceptance system shirts and he started kind of you know getting me more involved yeah he started getting me more involved and and uh all of a sudden like after this this past year after that year where i just like you know didn't get in and you know had those troubles with the gre um and covid had just started and you know, uh, we had extra time because I mean, a lot of the places were shutting down. We didn't shut down, but our hours got cut a lot, you know, and we were like only five workers that five of the, the techs and aides that were working. It was just one, one to one, or even sometimes less than that, but we were just, we were down to a skeleton crew. So we had a lot of time off. Um, and, uh, we, he told me about it. And that's where I was just like, oh, man, should I, should I, should I? And I had seen I had seen your guys' uh, uh, faces around because I would go through a, a Greg Todd's like I did that uh, he did some challenge um, 20, like 20 in January challenge or something like that yeah, yeah. and that's and then I seen you guys speak on there um, and then I recognized you because then I, that's when I started following you guys and then I was like all right you know what man whatever like if, if it gets me in it gets me in I just got to do this you know and like just let me invest in myself right. And so I did it. And from, from the get-go, I was just like, all right, this is cool. You know, this is cool. And uh, a lot of that stuff resonated really well. You know, I mean, I didn't like, I didn't like the point that like, Hey, you should really take these classes over. You know, I'm like, man, I'm not, I'm not trying to take that class over. Like I was willing to take, I took some of them over, you know, like the ones that I had to, the ones that I knew I'm like, I, I'm going to do okay in those ones, but like something like physics. And I was like, I'm not taking that over, you know? And I think, uh, uh Gail was my was my coach and uh that's what you know she they helped me she helped me out a lot and uh uh would go over my my GPA would go over this and all that and um it, it really helped um what I liked the most the the best thing that I, I thought the best part of it was the the habits of the accepted the that uh that like two week program. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that. I love that. Uh, that was like the best for me because it was actually me, me and Nate were talking about that. We're like, man, man, we, we should start like a podcast where we talk about like what, cause everybody, like you just said, uh, everybody talks about the good stuff. Like, Oh yeah, man, I got in cool. And then, you know, all the other aides that, that, that I worked with and I tell them my like, non, nah, like, what were you struggling with? Like, they wouldn't tell you that nobody wants to talk about that, but that's what I wanted to know why, because I wanted to feel like, Hey, did you go through this? Because I don't know if I'm, this is because of this, or this is because of my personal issues, like what's going on. And that's what I wanted to know because then 
then I can see like, okay, this is normal. I'm doing, I'm like, people feel like this. And then when you guys started doing that, I'm like, yo, man, this is exactly what I was looking for. This is, and that really made me get all in. And uh, I really enjoyed that. That was, that was the top, the top, the top part for me. Um, everything else, I just, I knew what I needed to do. I just needed some people to, you know, I just needed somebody to tell me, like, you got to do this. And uh, it helped. Um, it helped a lot when I when I got into some issues like writing some uh, uh, the essays, you know, just having Casey there to be like to overlook at my essay and say like, hey, man, you're good. You just got to make these changes. And honestly, sometimes I, I think the real reason I got into USC is because of, of my essays, like straight up, like it was I could it be could it be my 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 GPA? I mean, it was competitive. I don't know, you know, could it be, I mean, it, well, I know it wasn't the GRE because they, they waived the GRE this year. So that, that was to my benefit, you know? Uh, but I really believe it was, it was because of my essays and I'll give you guys, I'll tell you why, like what I did for that, what me and Nate did and what we heard you guys say that we were just like, Oh, I think, I think we know what to do. This is going to be game. This is game over now. You know, because I feel like I'm a good writer. I'm just not a really good constructor of like how the words are supposed to be. You know, I'll talk, you know, I came from, I came from the hood, you know, so I thought that's how I talk. Right. And as much as I try to clean it up, uh, that's not, it's not going to happen, you know. Um, but what I did to, for, for the essays is we were, me and Nate were curious one day. We were, because we used to always Zoom and and study you know if we weren't in person we were zoom study but since covid we was zoom study right so we started looking up at all the schools our top five and we started we started looking at these schools and like all right hey what are they marketing who are they looking for you know hey it, you i think it was you like hey you're you're on a dating site and you gotta be you got to do some research on who you want to date pretty much. Right. So that's the way I seen it. I'm like, all right, let me check this out. So now we were curious. So we had some, uh, a few uh, uh, coworkers that got into USC the year before. Right. And we asked them like, Hey, like, was there a lot of women that, that got in this year? And she's like, yeah, she was, there's more women that got in than men. And then we kind of looked at the website and they're really marketed towards women. Um, I think there was like something that happened uh, where they were really marketing for women, for women, but this, but this, for this cycle, you know, you gotta, you gotta think of, this is where it's important for you to pay attention. What's going around the country. Okay. There was one big thing that was going on, that was going down last this past year, BLM, Black Lives Matter. They had a huge movement last year. And so when we look on USC's website, you know, any school that's going to be a top school that wants people to go to their school, they're going to get with the times, right? And sure enough, everything you see is people of color. So I'm like, cool. I know how to write that essay. You know, and the essay was, I think the question was like, oh, how did your uh, experience uh, working as, a, as an aide or volunteering and what, what, what's one experience that happened there that is notable, you know, and made you want to really pursue a PT. And man, just being a minority and just seeing, you know, a, being a minority working in an area where, you know, there's you know, a lot of rich white people are at, you know, and uh, seeing how, you know, the minority are treated, you know, we used to get a lot of, uh, English of a second language, English is their second language or people that just didn't, couldn't speak English at all, right? And these people would come from like two, three, four hours away just for an, just an appointment there. And I'm like, yo, like, what are you doing here? Why are you coming all the way over here? And they're like, well, this is where the, you know, the, the, the attorney sent me, the people sent me, my insurance sent me. And I'm like, yo, that's not right. Like, and there was this, there was this lady that uh, this res this resonates with like this is probably the most one that 
made me write this essay is that she she got in a really bad accident i'm not going to disclose any names or anything like that but in a really bad accident and she would take the bus from like you know it wasn't far but on the bus she would spend on the bus three to four hours she had uh injured her 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 cervical her, she injured her lumbar she had hip injuries she had leg injuries and you know everything and she ride the bus like that all the way over here walk over to the clinic and then we would see her for an hour and then and then she'd take off in another two hours on the bus if she didn't get here on time like sometimes we we're like yo we can't take you you know and that's not her fault you know and that's that right there i'm like i'm writing this essay why because i don't think this is right you know a lot of these uh these docs are are seeing they're nickel and diming people they're just trying to make an easy buck and you're not going to do that to my people you know so that really made me write that essay because i really feel connected to that like it really hurts you know it hurts to see you know people being treated that way and that's not what we're that's not what we're about you know and yeah so I did my research. I connected those two together and wrote that essay. And I wrote it with so much feeling because I really believed in it, you know, and that's how I got in. I really believe that's how I got in. That's why I got it. You know? Yo, it's crazy because you're, you're touching on so many layers and I don't even think people are really picking up all the layers that you're really giving to them. Uh, so, so you, you talked about, yo, side note, this is like the most like in-depth interview we've done in a while. Like we like, like Sergio is sharing some layers for y'all. So like you're like what you were talking about was like basically understand the the state of mind that the school is in, right? Because that school is is led by human beings. It's people, right? People make that decision of whether or not your essay is good or not, whether or not you get accepted into that program or not. And what you did is you went to the level of not only understanding what the school was looking for, schools were looking for, but you understood the the psychology behind you know, why, like who they were marketing to. Obviously you said one cycle is women, right? Or whoever, like whatever the case, right? And I, like, but but the, the takeaway from that for everyone listening right now is, is you have to understand what state of mind the school is in. Those are people, right? Whether it's what's going on in the world, whether that's like what's going on in that particular like part of the country, whether that's what's going on in physical therapy as a whole, as a pre-PT, you owe it to yourself to understand those things because you'll be able to speak to them at a completely different level. Like you, you're probably right. Like your essay was, was probably a very significant part of your application because you did that research. And because you understood that now what you presented was like exactly what they needed to read. And I, I feel like a lot of us don't really respect that. That's how it works with anything, right? Any job you get, um, any relationship you get into, it requires you like putting yourself in their position and understanding what they're feeling, what they're going through, what they want, and actually presenting it to them. So I hope y'all pick that up because as Sergio was sharing all those things, that's those were the layers he was showing you because he was basically like, Serge, you were basically saying, hey, yeah, you know, they wave my GRE, they this, uh, but 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 hey, I I I knew them. I knew what they were going through. I knew what the world was going through. I knew what the country was going through. And guess what? I I basically presented that. So um, yeah. for the students that picked that up, they're they're well on their way to becoming strong applicants. For, for, for the students that missed that, you might want to listen to that part of this interview again after this is done, man. But I but I love that you said that because those are the layers that we all have. Like with any application, it changes obviously year to year, school to school, but but that's the way you have to approach it, man. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, and for those of y'all that are pre-PTs on your way and you're like, yo, I don't even know where to start. Sergio was talking about his story earlier on and he was you know, applying alone for the first time you know, for his first cycle and getting told by professors that you know, he would never you know, be a good enough applicant because of his GPA and all that stuff. If you felt like you related with those attributes and his story and you, you're, you're basically at the point where you're like, I just wanna know where to get started. Like, how do I begin? Where do I go? What's my next step after I watch this interview or listen to this interview? Go to www.acceptancenavigator.com. It's a free four video series that myself and Casey Coleman do. And basically what we do is we show you the foundation of the blueprint that Sergio and all of these other students that you've been hearing from 
the, the blueprint that they used to ultimately get accepted into PT school, regardless of where they were in their journey. So if you're looking for a perfect next step, go to www.acceptancenavigator.com. It should be below as well. Uh, but that should be your next step after this interview if you have not yet gone to that link. Because I'm telling you right now, you will thank yourself for it. But uh, Sergio, let's go to the final few questions. First one is going to be in relation to the day you got accepted into PT school. And the last one is going to be based off of advice you have for students. So tell us about um, after everything you had gone through, man, and you were like, all right, yo, like, I'm giving them everything I got. All right. Like, what was your day of getting that acceptance letter really like? Like, what went through your head? Um, how did you find out? Take us through that day so that the people listening right now can, can, can kind of live through your experience as they wait for their own. Okay. So before I get to that little part, I have to kind of go back like a week or like a few weeks. Okay. Yeah. So I went, I went through a really falling out, like right after at the end of uh, last year because of COVID and, you know, just kind of a lot of things where um, maybe all these pressures that we have, uh, I, got, I got kind of depressed, like towards the end of the holidays. Yeah. It's depressed, stressed out. I just kind of wasn't feeling like I was myself, um, you know, gained a lot of weight. Um, just wasn't really thinking, you know, I haven't, you know, it almost felt like a, like a PTSD relapse. Right. Um, and I really believe it just kind of everything that's happening. I mean, we got cold, we can't go anywhere. You know, yeah, I don't, you know, one of my favorite places to go to kind of release some stress was, you know, I'd go to Disneyland, you know, or, you know, go to the movies or something like that. Can't do the, none of those, you know, um, and especially in California, California is the strictest state right now right? Can't do anything. Uh, and so, you know, we're just, we're going through a lot of things. I found a place that I started going to, and it was, uh, it was called the South Coast Botanical Garden. You know, I just gave it a chance, went up there, I'm like, hey, it's open, whatever, if I look at some pretty flowers to kind of clear my mind a little bit. So I went to, I went there, started clearing my mind, and, you know, started using it to meditate, and just kind of like, you know, I'm going to get in, I'm getting in. I'm getting into USC. That was it. I just kept telling myself that. I just kept telling myself that, you know. And uh, so, you know, it was it was kind of a tough. It was a tough time, right? The day of, I sat down, and yeah, it's funny because uh, I was gonna go to uh, my cousin's house. We were gonna work on, uh, you know, a little project that we're working on, and. Uh, sat down, you know, got, got the a jury summons. And I'm like, oh man, I'm like, all right, I'll do this before I go. You know? So I started doing the jury summons and I'm on, I'm on my phone. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, I, I get a email. I'm like, what, what's this? And I'm like, congratulations. You've been accepted to uh, USC's doctor physical therapy program, the residential program. And I just kind of like, started looking around i'm like wait no i don't believe this this is some somebody's punking me right and i look i couldn't breathe like <laughs> i swear to you i couldn't breathe and i'm like and my sister looks at me and she goes serge you all right you're all right are you having a heart attack i'm like i think so because i just got into dpt school she's like what and i started crying like i started crying like i couldn't like I couldn't, I couldn't help it. Like it was the, the, like the, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, for the people that get accepted, they know what's like, you know, when you put, when you're, when you're to that verge, when you're just like, you know, I, I honestly, right before that, I was thinking about like, oh man, all right, well, I don't know if I can do and wait another year to try to see if I get accepted to, to a program. You know, I started thinking my, on my options, you know, like, all right, well, maybe I can go to PTA school. Well, you know what? I do have a homie that that works at the federal government in uh, in San Diego. Maybe he'll hook me up with a job. They say they get veterans all the time, you know. So like, I was already thinking about other things, you know, because of the the familial and all those, you know, where we're supposed to be at, you know. But you know, getting that, it's just like I forgot about all that. I forgot everything that I just that I was going through. I forgot it. There was a big weight on lifted off my shoulders. I felt I felt alive. Honestly, I felt I felt alive. 
the first thing I did after, you know, my mom and my sister, because they were they were the ones in the ears, you know, I call I call Nate. <laughs> I called Nate. I'm like, hey Nate, look at this, please. Like, make sure I'm not getting punk. And he looked and he goes, Nah, brother, you got in. You got in. And I'm like, Oh, I mean, I, and he heard me. I started crying. You know, he was just like, "Stop! You're like, you're making you're gonna make me cry." I'm like, "Nah, bro." He goes, "I'm like, I I know you're, you know he he decided to venture off, uh, do his podcast stuff where he's really really successful. So he he didn't want to do he didn't want to tell me he was gonna do a PT anymore because he wanted me to continue with it, right? He goes, "So you know when when this was going on, I told him like, hey, dude, like it's like it, me getting in, it's like you getting in because." Like we did that, we did the whole thing together, you know, after that, like I sent, uh, my, uh, my acceptance to, uh, my old director and he was a USC guy and, uh, he hit me up, he called me and he told me, and I just like, I told him, man, I appreciate everything that you did for me. And like, and, you know, he was like, man, he was, I'm really glad that you got into the residential program. Like that's the perfect fit for you because I'm better. I'm happy you got into that one versus the hybrid. Because I applied to both of them at that point. At this point, I was like, man, I'll get into whatever, you know. But he was just like, I'm happy you got the residential program. And uh, he's like, man, you're gonna be. I can't wait on. He goes, fight on. He gave me like the the peace sign, you know, like what they do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like it, it, I, I couldn't believe it for a few days. Like even 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 up to like maybe about a month ago, I was just like, man. They made a mistake. <laughs> like, I didn't believe it. I thought they made a mistake. I'm like, why? Like, nah, I couldn't, it can't be me. Like, it's too, it's just too, too surreal, you know, it being my dream school. Like, you, if you come from California, especially Southern California, there's two schools out here, the big ones, you know, that everybody wants to go to UCLA and USC. You know, most of us, you know, kids from the, from the hood want to go to USC because that's, it's, it's always been SC, 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 you know? And now that I'm like, part of that, it's just like, it's something, it's just something surreal, you know, my number one school, my dream school, I kind of like gave the middle finger to that, that professor who said, I'm never going to get in because he even mentioned like, you'll never get into USC, mm, you know, like, <laughs> it's and like, it was just everything. It was, it was the most incredible day of my life. I remember after I left here and I drove because I was driving to my cousin's house when he was about a half hour away from here when i got on the car like every every song that 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 came on was just like that inspirational song and i started yelling at the top of my lungs like like i was on the freeway like, yes yes i was just yelling like i couldn't believe it like i couldn't do it here but i couldn't do you know for some reason we feel more comfortable in my in your car right but i, I couldn't believe it like you know, in songs like I Have a Dream come, you know, came on by, uh, by Common. And then uh, what's that other one by uh, 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 Kanye West? Uh, yeah, all like all the inspirational songs like that, that you think of, like they were there. I'm like, dude, like this is my day. And it was, it just felt like, like, it, like everything, you know? And the funny thing about it is that it's only the beginning. Wow. Man, y'all listen. For those of y'all that have been listening to this story tonight, um, has this has this been like, has this been like it's kind of beautiful to listen to uh to the story from a spectator point of view? And uh we can almost feel it, man. And um, you know, I first of all, I just want to say, man, just I'm so freaking proud of you like real talk, Um, everything you've been able to accomplish up until this point, you obviously deserve every bit of it. Uh, But, but, but my respect for your resilience, my respect for, uh, for your certainty in yourself, man, because there's some people that, plenty of people that have doubted your ability to get to this point. Uh, Man, wait, way to, way to team up with people like Nate and people that, you know, believed in you and people that could push you to be at your best, man. But uh, but every bit of that acceptance letter was deserved. So um, I, I just want to say, man, I'm proud of you insanely. And uh, for the final question, it's only appropriate that I ask you, what 
what are words of wisdom that you can leave these students with tonight? After everything you've gone through, the ups, the downs, the frustrations, and ultimately the acceptance into PT school, and now this new beginning of, you know, now, now starting PT school this fall, I believe, right? So starting PT school this fall and, you know, well on your way to becoming a physical therapist, what would you say to other pre-PTs who are, uh, say where you were a year ago or where you were a few months ago, right? Like, like, what would you say to them to keep them pushing and fighting so that they can one day get to the point where you are today? Never give up. You know, there's a, uh, it's, you can't really see it, but like right there, right there, there, I have a little decal that says never give up. And you can, you, you can never give up. Like, it doesn't matter what people tell you and no matter even if if they're telling you that you're going to fail even if you do fail don't give up because a failure is not a failure if you don't give up it's only a failure if you stop that's what it, that's where it's at um one of the one of the things too that, that led me to continue to kind of push on is you know i'm I'm looking back at the people who are following me, you know, I'm, I'm laying down that trail, you know, and if this helps anybody, you know, that, that are going through me, hopefully they're following the same path that I laid out to them. And then they just make that even wider. So that way it just becomes a road and then a freeway, you know, because that's where we're, we can't allow anybody to tell us what we're not meant to be, you know, only you can do that for yourself. If I would have done that, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here. You know, I would have listened to that, that professor. I would be doing something else and not doing this. And honestly, you know, I followed my dream. And as much as I was this close to kind of, you know, hanging up, hanging them up, I, I, like something told me to continue to follow my dream, to believe, you know, because this is what I desired and be persistent. You have to be persistent. That's, and that's what it takes, you know? The best athletes aren't always the most talented. They're the ones who work the most and just keep working at it and you'll get there. That's my best, that's, a, that's the best advice I can give anybody. Man, that's, I appreciate you sharing that. I'm gonna read you a comment uh, by, uh, by future Dr. Bush uh, from, uh, from the pre-PT fam and he said, um, Congrats. Congratulations, Dr. Sergio. Man, your story is exactly what I needed to hear to really look back in because this was so deep to the point where I'm living through your story and feeling your, um, your acceptance right now by just listening and taking everything that you said in. Um, uh, none of it has, and, and sorry, and none of it has happened to me yet. And it's very inspirational. And man, I needed this so much. Uh, just, he said he's so proud of you, man. And, and congrats, man. So um, already tonight, you've already inspired people, man. And I mean, I think we, we need more of this. We need more just, just real conversations, I think. Um, and I think, you know, social media is such a beautiful thing. Um, and online is such a beautiful thing because it can be a great tool. Um, but I think sometimes we use it just to showcase the good stuff because we want people to only see the good stuff. We don't want people to see that we're struggling. We don't want people to see that we have low GPAs. We don't want to see, you know, people to see that we got rejected already. We don't want people to see that that we're in the thick of it when uh, <laughs> that's the very thing people need to hear. Yeah, that's the very thing that we like. That that's the real issue is that we're not talking about this stuff, and because we're not talking about it, that everyone thinks that they're in a, a, a you know a predicament that they can't climb out of. You know what I mean? Like I want conversations like this to be just be the norm because this is real life. This is what real resiliency looks like. Betting on yourself when nobody else is betting on you, you know? Fighting through moments where you yourself feel like you're caving in and just relying on people that believe in you, people that are close to you, people that can pick you back up, man, that's life. That's life. And so, uh, you know, for those of y'all listening, this was one that I would, if I were y'all, I'd probably listen to again, <laughs> maybe a few times over, because uh, this this one I really enjoyed. This one has inspired the heck out of me even. So uh, appreciate you, Sergio, for taking time out of your evening, uh, for for being willing to share your experience, man. And we can't wait to see the, the next milestones in your journey and um, how you'll continue inspiring us. And for those of y'all listening, listen every single Tuesday night, 
9 p.m. Eastern time. We got a different student coming through. This is episode 51. Uh, we got plenty more coming. So literally every single Tuesday night, join us right here. Be inspired by real stories, real students, all from the Accepted System Coaching Program. And if you're feeling stuck and you want to know where to begin, go to acceptancenavigator.com. We got you covered. Much love. See y'all next week. Goodbye.